Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Crestview High School, where tonight in week one of the Ohio High School basketball season, the Crestview Knights welcome in the Van Wert Cougars. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dave Bowen and our entire WSN crew. Dave, happy first week of basketball. Happy first <laughs> week of basketball, Danny. It's great to be your wingman tonight, <laughs> opening night, lid lifter. And it's like Christmas come early. Absolutely. Dave, we take a look at both of these teams. Let's look at the visitors first, the Van Wert Cougars. Regional finalists last year graduated maybe some of the best athletes that school's ever seen. They're breaking in a lot of new kids tonight. They absolutely are, and you're right. You talk about graduation. Uh, these head coaches, both uh, Ben Loddick and Doug Etzler, they lost a lot to graduation, but that's part of high school basketball. Seniors for Van Wert who are no longer here. Graduating Nate Phillips, A.J. Prophet, Luke Wessel, Carson Smith, Garrett Gunner, and Aiden Pratt, the straw that stirred the drink. But you know what? That's the exciting part of coaching as well. It's a new group of young men. Going to start four seniors tonight and a freshman is Van Wert and Ben Loddick. He's got them ready to go tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. And for the home team, the Crestview Knights, what a magical season they had last year. State runner-up, Coach Etzler come home. He takes his alma mater back to the state tournament. He lost a lot of scoring. Not only a lot of scoring, Dave, he lost a lot of leadership, especially with his son, Gavin Etzler. You're right. They were 25-4 and four overall last year. As you mentioned, state runner-up. Just an outstanding season, outstanding tournament run. But seniors, again, no longer with us, having graduated. Gavin Etzler, Drew Nielsen, Mitch Temple, Carson Hunter, Nate Lickley, Nasir Easterling, and Wesson Ludwig, a group that... Maybe going into the year last year, this time of year, a year ago, they weren't expected to do what they did, but they gelled. And now Coach Epson's got to do the same thing. He's got some returning lettermen, more so than Van Wert, but they've got to gel. They've got to come together. They've got to mix that experience with you. And tonight, both programs, they've got a lot of questions. They're going to get some answers. Let's take a look at our starting lineups for the game tonight. For the visitors, the Van Wert Cougars. They'll be led by number two, Caden Schaefer, a 5'9", 140-pound senior. Number three, Connor Campbell, 6'2", 180-pound senior. Number five, Ryland Miller, 6'2", 165-pound senior. Number 11, the freshman, we talked about him earlier, Keaton Welch, 5'10", 145-pound freshman. And number 24, Colin Haggerty, 6'1", 185-pound senior. What's significant about that lineup, Dave, is that young Mr. Keaton Welch, the grandson of the legendary coach Al Welch. Legendary coach Al Welch and one of the premier former players from Northwest Ohio, Wayne Trace Raider, Rob Welch. Keaton's got the pedigree, yes. and he's going to be out there as a freshman. I know Coach Loddick's excited to put him with those four seniors, and it's going to be a process. I think we're going to see him evolve during the season and during his career into that leadership role, but right now, it's going to be those four seniors to lead the way for the Cougars. For the home team, the Crestview Knights, let's take a look at that starting lineup. Number three, Kellen Putman, a 6'1 sure. senior guard. Number 10, Tommy Hefner, a six foot junior guard. Number 11, Jarrett Harding, a 6'2 senior guard. Number 33, Ren Sheets, the 6'6 six, six power forward, the junior. And number 44, Connor Sheets, 6'5 power forward, again, center, call it what you want, senior. David, it looks on paper as though in the paint, Crestview has an added advantage. Yeah, it's a, it's a throwback a little bit offensively. We see a lot of the four one, uh, four out, one in, or five out, none in. I think we're gonna see that from the Cougars, five out, none in. Crestview, they're gonna go with three guards and two posts. I don't know the last time I've seen right, that. Right. Now they're gonna sub in and rotate out of that a little bit, but four returning lettermen, the question mark, obviously, uh, for Crestview is in that point guard position with Tommy Hefner making his first start. But you've got Ren Sheets in the post, the first team Northwest Conference selection, and they're going to rally around him. Van Wert's going to try and keep the ball out of Ren Sheets' hands. And Dave, we're going to have to stand up here because I don't believe the Van Wert folks, I don't think they sit down until they score. Is that correct? Yeah, that's a yeah, tradition so, for the Cougars. Yeah, so, yeah. That's our, we don't want to step on their tradition. We'll stand up here and. Uh, Take note, and we are underway, partner. Week one of the high school basketball season in the state of Ohio. Cougars control the tip. They'll go right to the bucket, put it up, miss shot. Rebound comes down to the Knights. They'll bring it down the right side. Ryland Miller went to the hole with authority, but Ren Sheets, as you said, I think he got a little hand on that. And the Cougars, right away, Coach Loddick with a different lick. 
look, it's out here in a zone defense. Uh, yeah, a little bit of zone action for the Cougars. Crestview will move the ball from left to right. They'll go deep down to the baseline, back up top. Thought about taking the shot. They'll go in, throw the ball away, and our first turnover of the game belongs to the Crestview Knights. A little nerves out there right now, yeah? A little bit of nerves. Tommy Hefner trying to hook up with Connor Sheets. It was the right idea, just the physical air. Mentally, that was the place to go with the basketball. Here come the Cougars. Cougars will bring it back down. They'll dribble drive to the top of the key, go to the foul line, kick it back out. Van Wert last year, a 18-8 and eight record. Go to the regional finals, what a great ride for them. Many of you remember that fantastic shot they hit in the district finals to beat the St. Mary's Rough, the district semifinals to beat the St. Mary's Rough Riders yeah. in Austin Parks. And I gotta say right now, you're two octaves lower than what you were on that call. <laughs> that was an outstanding call, Mr. Holbrook. <laughs> There's another shot by number 11, Keaton Welch, the freshman, as he goes dribble drive baseline. Misses that shot by quite a bit, so he'll get settled down here, folks. You wanna start low and build as the that's season right, goes. That's right, Just like the teams get Absolutely. better. Absolutely, I can't, I can't get all the tricks out on week exactly. one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 5.35 to go here in the first quarter. Still scoreless from Crestview High School. Danny Holbrook, Dave Owen, a nice little turnaround. Shot goes up and it's missed. Rebound comes down to Sheets, takes it back up. That shot goes awry, goes out of bounds, and it's going to go back to the Crestview Knights. So we see some offensive rebounding right there by Crestview. They do have the height advantage inside. Sheets with a miss, a nice spin to the 10, doesn't connect. Ren Sheets with the rebound and then Sheets with another board and, and it goes out of and bounds. And we talked about this earlier, Ren Sheets, the junior, and Connor Sheets, they're not related at all. They are not related. For the novice fan, I, I could have said that. People would have believed me, right? Two yeah. big guys yeah. on the Crestview roster. Uh -huh. <laughs> so here come the Cougars, still scoreless. Six or 6.15 to go here in the first quarter. Week one of the high school basketball season. They'll swing it around. Three ball from the right side goes up, goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ren Sheets. He'll kick it out to number 10, Tommy Hefner. He's guarded out top by Caden Schaefer. They'll swing it to the right side. Thought about taking the shot. Try to push it in on the post. They were going down to number 33, Ren Sheets, located on the low block. And that's a that high-low action we're going to see. I know it was from the wing into the post, but when you can get Connor and Ren on the same side of the floor, that makes it tough for the defense and tough to uh, create help side action there defensively. Dave, if you're Coach Edsler and you've lost a lot, we've talked about that, what are you looking for in week one here? There's a shot that goes off the mark, rebound comes down to the Cougars. Well, both coaches, you want to establish your defense. You know, what you can control for sure. They say defense travels, that's what you're looking to do. But you are excited to see who's going to step up offensively and who's going to play under control. Who's going to look comfortable out there you know comfortability is a huge piece here early on sure. and neither team has scored that's not to be unexpected right now you're getting the jitters out as you mentioned earlier uh, Van Wert back in the zone action now switching up defenses a little bit and that creates that challenge of being comfortable a little bit as well for the Crestview offense you know when I coach Dave and there's a shot from the side there goes off the mark when I coached we we, we we didn't we do it or excuse me we did do some zones early in the year because really you don't prepare for a lot of zone action first off you know when you're getting your kids out in that game one yeah I, I talked to coach Etzler he was excited in his third scrimmage he finally saw some man-to-man -man because he hadn't seen that yeah. in the first two because the programs that they were scrimmaging against were using zone but uh, right now Crestview playing man-to-man -man. coach Lada he wants to play man-to-man, -man, but when your tallest guy is 6'2", and you're going against two six-five guys, one six-five, one six-six, you got to think about the zone, and he, he's going to it early, and you can't say it hasn't worked because we're still deadlocked at zero. And there you see Keaton Welch, the young freshman, Dave, and he dribble drives to the left side. He gets fouled. He's going to go to the line to shoot, too. He looks comfortable. He really, now, he didn't make the shot, but he does not look intimidated by the bigger kids. Yeah, and these kids have played a lot of summer basketball, travel basketball, but not in a full gym for a while. And we get the point there by the Cougars. And they're going to find themselves a seat, and so are we. <laughs> Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. And there you see the free throws, our Lee's famous recipe, chicken free throws. What an apropos name at the foul line. Oh, oh that's a dad nice, joke. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> The Cougars in that 3-2 zone. Crestview moving the ball well. Jared Harding. Nice look to find the Gibbs cutter. Up 
And you're looking for comfortability from him. He played a lot last year. He played in all 29 games for Crestview, as did Ren Sheets. Uh, Harding came off the bench and really had an effect on some games when he would come into the game. He was a great sixth man for the Knights. There's the Cougars that tied up at two, a piece on the Charles River scoreboard. A little steal there from the Knights as they'll back it up, bring it down the right side of the floor, look to attack that nice three ball from the top of the arch, missed off the mark. We'll go back down the low post, trying to establish his position in a big time move, and they're going to get a charge on number 44, Connor Sheets. And a big step to the baseline cost him the charge. Yeah, great offensive charge taken by number five, Ryland Miller. Does a super job right there. He does a great job defensively, but you know what? If you're Coach Etzler, you're not upset with that at all. Connor Sheets attacking the rim right there. Good spin and pin. Just better defense right there. Smart defense, too, to pick up that charge. Entering the game now for the Knights, number five, Braxton Leith, the 5'11 sophomore, and number zero, Hayden Perot, the 5'10 sophomore. They enter the game for Coach Etzler. How, how deep will he go, Dave? I think we're looking at seven and then trying to develop number sure. eight and number nine. And I think you have the same thing for Coach Lada. He feels comfortable going seven, got to develop eight and nine. And again, as the season goes along, you want to expand. But when you get to tournament, eight's the perfect number. So here's Welch with the ball. He kicks it back out to Connor Campbell. Connor Campbell, the gridiron star for the Cougars. We've called his name a lot this fall. It's quite a good athlete there for the Cougars. And we get another foul call. What do you think of the new foul rules this year, Dave, with the, with the no one and one anymore? Yeah, the one and one's a dinosaur. It's extinct. And we've had three girls basketball games here at Ray Etzler Gymnasium thus far this year, and I've really paid close attention. The jury's still out. Sure. I've talked to some officials as well, and they're like, well, the teams are going to adjust. But right now, I think it's hard to get to the free throw line. <laughs> right. There's a nice cut there by Number zero, Gage Steeman, the 6'2 senior, cuts to the ball off the right side, and he's going to go to the foul line. He'll shoot two. So you think about it, in a regular half at foul number seven, you're shooting one and one. Well, now it's not till foul ten, if you want to think sure. uh, accumulatively uh, for the whole half. Um, and every quarter they reset. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's five fouls per quarter and then we're shooting two right away. It's not even a double bonus. It's just you're shooting two free throws. So uh, it was unique. Yeah. None of us knew that was coming. It was a National Federation change. Um, and I still don't know the method behind the madness, that's, to be quite that's honest. That's what I want to know. What, what, who precipitated the change? Yeah. What's the reason? What I've noticed in the three games I've watched thus far is it's, the game is shorter. Yeah. And I don't know that that's good. <laughs> High school basketball, yeah, what, I don't what, think what we have an issue. For? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Ball goes out of bounds. We go back to Crestview. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So Crestview will trigger the ball out underneath their own basket. They'll swing it up top. This is Perot. They'll swing it around. Gets it to Harding. Harding takes a little jumper. Off the mark. Rebound to Sheets. Sheets gets it back to Harding and loses the dribble. And it'll go back to Van Wert. Good hands by the Van Wert defense right there. Schaefer comes down in attack. <laughs> and Ren Sheets, I think he has three or four blocks already here in the first quarter. Can we call Ren the rim wrecker there? Nice job by Ren. Not only that, Dave, his ability to run the floor is really key in that position. Yeah, Ren Sheets is a heady player. And... Coach Etzler and his staff just want to see him continue to be even more aggressive at both ends of the floor. And right now, he is displaying that aggressiveness defensively. This is, a lot of great help side D. This is Welch on the dribble drive. He'll swing it back out. Three ball from the right side goes up. It's off the mark. That was Caden Schaefer as the ball drops into the, or the, excuse me, the Crestview Knights' hand. Three ball from the top of the key, and it's good. Number 10, Tommy Hefner knocks in the triple, and he makes it 5-4 on the Charles River scoreboard. That's a Lee Kinsel sales and service three-pointer. Tommy Hefner picks up the bucket. The starting point guard for the Knights. And I'm glad you said that, Dave. Lee Kinzel on Irvin Road and Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. They are a great sponsor for us here at WOSN. 5-4 on the Charles River scoreboard. Nice cut to the basket, goes off the mark. Rebound comes back down to the Cougars. They'll go left side. 
Still a little bit of nerves here in the first quarter. Everybody's trying to find their feet. Cougars kick it back out top. I like this Vanward offense. Five guys constantly moving, getting the ball. It's not sticking, getting reset here right now. Keaton Welch getting everybody on the same page. Now they're going to run a set. Crestview runs the same set. Vanward calls it Orville. Crestview calls it X. We steal from each other. <laughs> Absolutely. Every, if you ain't stealing, you ain't trying. There's a nice backdoor cut and a reverse layup. Number five, Rylan Miller with the nice get there. And the Cougars take a 6-5 lead and another lost possession there. And here comes Welch with the ball on the right side. Cougars up 6-5. Welch goes dribble drive to the foul line. Little jumper from the foul line, and it's good. The freshman, Keaton Welch. I got to say it, that elbow shot, his father made a lot of money on that <laughs> shot from 15 feet right there. Like father, like son, nicely done Cougars by Keaton Welch. 8-5 on the Charles River scoreboard. And another turnover goes out of bounds right in front of the Van Wert bench. And they're going to say it was last touch by Van Wert. Get the groans from the Van Wert crowd here. The folks. groans. <laughs> and we got to have the officials. We can't That's play right. the game without That's them. Right. Our officials tonight, Mark Hemminger, Scott Mock, and Barry Mag. It's their first game too, folks. <laughs> 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Van Wert leads 8-5. to five. Here come the Knights. Nice job of putting the ball on the block. Number 44, Connor Sheets knocks in the deuce, and he makes it 8-7 on the Charles River scoreboard. Nice cut by Connor Sheets, gets the bucket and scores. Nice movement, not just standing around. Again, now we see Van Wert do the same thing. Little pick and roll, but everybody moving. Welch with the shot. There's the jumper, and it rolls in. Keaton Welch has got the last two buckets for the Cougars, and the Knights will take a half-court jumper, and it's going to fall just short. After one quarter of play from Crestview High School, the Van Wert Cougars lead 10-7. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School, where after one quarter of play, the Van Wert Cougars lead 10-7. Dave, let's take a look stat-wise at the first quarter of play. For the Cougars, they were 3 for 12 in the first quarter, sh quarter shooting, uh, 0 for 2 behind the arc, 3 for 12, uh, two, or 3 for 10 for 30%, 4 for 4 from the line, 11 defensive rebounds. Crestview, 2 for 6 from 2, and 1 for 3 from 3, and four defensive rebounds, one offensive rebound. Six turnovers for Crestview, one turnover for the Cougars. And Coach, not, uh, Coach Etzer's not going to be happy about that. That's where the growth has to occur yep. most predominantly for Crestview. That's a and great point. Vanward's going to challenge you in that area. Those guards are quick. And they really use their hands well to get a deflection. Another Lee Kinzel three ball goes in. Hayden Parrot. Parrot, I called him Perot, excuse me. I was waiting on that to go to get that pronunciation correct. Hayden Parrot knocks in the triple, and he ties it up at 10. Yeah, nice shot by Parrot, the sophomore. 5'10 guard comes off the bench. And there's a nice dribble drive as he splits the two defenders, Connor Campbell, and he makes it look easy, and it makes the Cougars 12-10. There's a three ball from the left side, and everything's falling right now as Braxton Leith knocks in the Lee Kinsel triple. And here we go, Dave, 13-12, nice. Yeah, Coach Etzler's got to be really thrilled. That's six points off the bench here early in the second quarter with Leith and Parrott both hitting from distance. And we got a foul on the drive there. They're going to get number 10, Tommy Hefner, with the foul. That is Hefner's first foul. Entering the game now, they take out number 10, Nate Gearhart. They'll bring Keaton Welch in, give him about a 30-second break. Shows you how important that freshman is to this lineup, Dave. Absolutely, and Coach Lodic's just got to be thrilled with how his uh, team is attacking offensively. One-on-one -on -one with uh, one -on -one driving line defensively for Crestview, and they're pressuring that Crestview defense getting into the paint. We see it right there with Welch That's again. Say Welch tries to dribble drive there to the foul line. Looking for Welch, and uh, he is right now, you said it earlier, the straw that stirs the drink, the young freshman kind of leading this team right now in hostile territory. Down 13-12. There's a three ball. 
Kind of short arm that one. Knights will get the rebound. They'll come down the left side. This is Jared Harding. He'll kick it out to Parrott. Parrott knocks down the triple. Are you kidding me? Peyton Parrott back-to-back -back triples, and the Knights are rolling at 16-12. That's three in a row. Nothing but cotton for number zero. Hayden Parrott looks very comfortable out there, does the sophomore. Coach Etzler's got to be thrilled to death with that young man's play so far in this early season contest. He shared with me that Hayden has been shooting the ball well in scrimmages. And there you see Connor Campbell, the athleticism, Dave, as he goes between the legs, splits the defenders, and he makes it 16-4 on the Charles River scoreboard. I really like Connor Campbell's stick to as far as attacking the rim. And looky there, Connor Sheets, the big man, steps out and knocks in the deuce, and we'll go 18-14. With three, or excuse me, with five, 36 to play. 18 to 14 on the Charles River scoreboard. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Crestview High School. Dave, we come back from the first quarter break talking about nobody hitting shots. And my goodness, you're the lucky guy, Jay, because everything's falling right now. Exactly. It was zero to zero for the first part of the, the game. Now, both teams are heating up, and we've seen it from both sides. The youth in Parrott and Leaf for Crestview and Welch for Van Wert. And you talked about leadership, and I and we, we know Coach Lydon wants sure. to see uh, – Welch take on that role, but Caden Schaefer and Colin Haggerty, those are the two seniors, Schaefer with the ball right now, that he's really looking to have that, uh, take on that leadership role to begin with here in the season. And this is Welch, it's a little dribble drive, a little spin there, takes it up, shot's gonna go off the mark, rebound comes down to Wren, he'll kick it back out to Tommy Hefner as he'll bring it down the right side. And again, a freshman shot right there that you may not be excited about, but you gotta live with here sure. early on, he's gotta learn. The fact that he's getting to the rim is really important right now for his growth. There's another shot from the right side. Rebound comes down the sheets, puts it back up, and he's going to be fouled. That foul's going to go on number 24, Colin Haggerty. Yeah, Haggerty and Sheets battling for the rebound. Sheets gets the victory, if you will, as far as the battle is concerned. Haggerty fouls, and Sheets going to go to the free throw line. Last year, he shot 67% from the charity stride. And David, it has to matter a lot for this young night team that that Connor Sheets, or excuse me, that he at Ren Sheets has been in a lot of big games. I mean, none bigger than what he played in last year. Exactly, and, and again, Jer Harding was right there as well on the tournament trail, but uh, Ren Sheets was in the post. He was going against the big kids. <laughs> a lot of division one yeah, players. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But you're right, you got to rely on that experience. Ren Sheets is a quiet kid, so leadership for Crestview, you're really looking at it from Connor Sheets uh, as well as um, um, Jared Harding. And there is a nice cut there. Gage Steeman gets the shot off and he misses it. Here come the Knights as they race down the floor. They'll go baseline, kick it back out. Thought about a three ball. There's a three ball from Parrott on the way, and it's good. Are you kidding me? Hayden Parrott is a triple machine, Dave. That's three in a row for that young Yeah, man. yeah, he shot it three times. They've all go down. It's shooting practice right now for one Hayden Parrott. It's impressive. And that was not on my bingo card <laughs> coming into this game. <laughs> With 4.18 to go, the Crestview Knights have built a nine-point lead, 23-14. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School with 4.18 to go. The Crestview Knights have built a 23-14 lead. Danny Homer and Dave Bowen from Crestview High School. Our free throws, or excuse me, our three-point sponsor tonight is Lee Kinzel Sale and Service. Lee Kinzel on Irvine Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. I, I read that three-point read because that's what we're looking at, Dave. Three-pointers are just raining right now. They are raining, and uh, it's Lee Kinzel, and I... Love my Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> Guess where I bought it? Lee Kinzel. You got it, brother. We appreciate their sponsorship. It, uh, yeah, you're going to get some money put in the old pocket there. <laughs> and uh, NIL deals for announcers. We'll yeah, maybe I can get a free oil change. <laughs> Here so, we go. Keith Welch with the basketball. Here come the Cougars down nine with 4.13 to go here in the second quarter. 
They've kind of lost their rhythm a little bit. They've got to the rim. It's not that they haven't got good looks, Dave. They have got some good looks. And there's another turnover. And here come the Knights. They'll go left side. Shot goes up. And it goes in. It rolls in for number five, Braxton Lee. These kids from Crestview, these young kids, they are really enjoying the spotlight, and they've put on a nice run in Parrott and Leith. And Leith, and again, uh, those two guys, they were on the football team uh, this fall that had some success. Another guy I want to talk about real quick. Yeah. From a leadership standpoint for Crestview, we mentioned Connor Sheets sure. and Jarrett Harding. Those are two guys that Coach Etzler's talked about. Isaac Klein. Isaac Klein is unable to play. He suffered a knee injury in the playoff game against LCC. But he is also a leader for this team, and he's going to do what he can from the bench. Um, sorely missed by this squad. Is he squad. going to play at all this year? No, he will be out. Yeah. yeah. There's a steal. And oh, and he tried the dunk, and he missed it. And the rebound comes down. It's put back up by number two, Caden Schaefer. And he makes it 25-16 on the Charles River scoreboard. I love how Caden Schaefer just did not quit on that. His teammate tried to go with the one-handed jelly, came up empty, and Schaefer's there. Johnny on the spot to get the bucket. I like this action by Crestview. Back screen, get to the block. There's a missed shot. Rebound comes down to the Cougars. They're down 25-16. Connor Campbell's going to go, and he looks like he twisted an ankle, or maybe they got a travel call, maybe slipped there. Yeah, he slipped a little bit. Connor has had some success of attacking the Crestview defense. That time he tried to pull up against the double team. There were two white shirts in the way, and uh, slid his feet, went down the travel call. So turnover to turnover, Crestview with the pass, Van Wert with the dead ball violation. And the officials are going to come out, and they're going to clean up a little bit of precipitation, a little fog on the way over here tonight uh, with the uh, warmer temperatures. But uh, So maybe uh, Jim's heating up here. I I'm a little warm here. There's a lot of people in this. For a, for a season opener day, this is a great crowd. It's a great crowd. It's a great rivalry yeah. game between Van Wert and Crestview. Last year, this game was played late because of the football success of the Cougars. And uh, Van Wert came away with a victory in that game on their way, as you said, to that regional runner-up. There's a shot from the right side. Shot goes up by Jared Harding. Comes down, back down to the rebound to the Knights. They'll reset it, and Hayden Parrott will bring it out top. And Crestview learned a lot from that Van Wert game last year towards the end of the season because, again, they didn't lose after that until the state championship That's game. That's unreal, yeah. Sheets to sheets, and that ball goes awry. Rebound comes down to the Cougars. Caden Schaefer will bring it down. He goes to the left side. Thought about pulling the trigger on the three. They'll get it out to Connor Campbell. Campbell works the ball around to the top of the key. Van Wert with the five out offense. Nobody in the paint, nobody on the block. Really trying to spread things out to make things tough defensively from a one-on-one -on -one perspective and taking away help side. And Keaton Welch, the young freshman, is on the bench right now. There's a nice dribble drive, finds his man in the paint, and he knocks it in. Number five for the Van Wert Cougars, Rylan Miller, and he closes the gap at 25-18. Miller with the bucket, but you got to give the assist to Caden Schaefer. Great penetration. Up fake, Ren Sheets went for the up fake. Schaefer penetrated and found, a team, found his teammate. There's another three from the right side, and Dave, that was in the bucket and rolled back out. Another nice shot there by Braxton Leith. And here come the Cougars trying to cut into that lead at 25-18. This is Connor Campbell. Dribble drives to the right side, takes it all the way in, and Sheets fouls him on the drive. He'll go to the line for two. Yeah, Connor Campbell, again, I like his attitude with the basketball, attacking the rim, had his head up there, was able to read whether there was defensive rotating over to take a charge. There wasn't, and he was able to get a foul. As you said, on number 33, Ren Sheets, he it, picks it, up his first. You know, that's first. so cool that you say that, Dave. Dan Dockage, the former coach at uh, Indiana and Bowling Green, talks a lot about keeping your head up to the rim. And Chin so, to the rim. Yeah, and so many kids don't do that. And you're exactly right. Connor Campbell had that head up the entire time, and he does a nice job of putting pressure on that night defense. He did, and, and we've seen it throughout this first half. Just missed that free throw there on the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. See if he can pick this one up. And he does. Connor Campbell knocks it in for the Cougars. Connor's got five on the night. It makes it 25-19. The Knights still in control with 1.19 to go. So Coach Lada coming out of that timeout. He's got to be pleased with how his squad has played here. But there goes Parrott again. Parrott, a nice drive. And he switches hand, Dave. Takes it up with his left hand. This young man is going to go the line 
and go for double digits. You didn't see that coming. <laughs> did not see that coming. Neither did Coach Loddick. That's why he took that timeout after a three-pointer by Parrott. And his team has adjusted, but right there, Hayden Parrott took advantage of attacking the rim. No help side, uh, able to rotate over here. Shell defensive principles not in play. And it puts him on, again, the Lee Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. He's got 10 to lead all scorers, and a great job by this young sophomore as he shows no fear. Misses the second one, and a nice job by Sheets of tipping the ball out to the top of the key, and the Knights will reset with 104 to go in the half. So, again, Crestview with the two bigs in right now, trying to get the floor balanced a little bit. And a nice job of rotation there by 24, Colin Haggerty. He just reaches in, and they'll get him on the foul. He was kind of surprised by that, but young man, you can't reach when your feet stop. <laughs> Cannot reach. And again, with the new rule change, we're back to three fouls for Van Wert here in the second quarter. Crestview with two, so we're going to take it out of bounds. Crestview will trigger the ball out underneath their basket with 57 seconds to go. They'll get it into Sheets. Sheets will go back side to Sheets, and he puts it in. Number 44, Connor Sheets knocks it in with the assist from Ren Sheets. Ren Sheets so unselfish, finds his teammate Connor there. He makes do on it. It's nice when you're 6'6 six, six and you're passing to 6'5. There's a three ball from the right side, and it's good. Rylan Miller, the 6'2 senior, knocks in the triple to close the gap at 28-22. And Dave, I dare say, they needed that. They did need that. And again, Rylan Miller says, OK, you're going to put your 6'5 guy on me. He can't really come out and guard me tight, because I think I can blow by him, and he's going to stay off. I'm going to drill that the shot, and he does. And what a great defensive effort there by the Cougars. And you saw number two, Caden Schaefer, come out and lead with the opposite hand. And he was down in his stance doing exactly what his coach taught him to do. Yeah, Caden Schaefer, he's doing a great job of being a leader out there with his physical activity. And that's what the Cougars got from him last year. He came in off the bench as a spark plug for this team. Well. The spark plug's firing from the get-go now. He's not coming off the wood. He's out there to begin with, and, and he has made his presence known tonight. And we did not mention it, but the Cougars played another freshman in there. They had number 20, Cohen Bragg, in there. So they've got two freshmen that are contributing, and there's a nice job by Sheets to knock it in, and he makes it in 30 to 22. Obviously, you're living in the present. This is game one of 23-24. But the future is bright for the Cougars. And the shot goes off the mark. So after one half a play from Crestview High School, the Crestview Knights lead 30 to 22. We'll have second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Crestview High School. It's halftime here with the Crestview Knights lead the Van Wert Cougars 30 to 22. Dan Everett, Dave Bowen, and Dave, let's take a look at our first half stats for the evening. Yeah, for the Cougars from two point, they were seven for 18, and 39% from two point land. One for four behind the arc for 25%. Five for six from the free throw line for 83%. Four defensive rebounds, one offensive rebound for a total of five in the first half, and only two turnovers. Coach Loddick's got to be real pleased with the four game that his team has played in the first half. For Crestview, from two point land, six for 13 for 45%, five for eight behind the arc for 56%, three for four from the free throw line for 75%, and they are out rebounding the Cougars, eight with, with eight defensive boards and four offensive boards for a total of 12. Crestview does have eight turnovers. Coach Epsler's got to be real pleased with that outside shooting. Yeah, I was going to say, it's almost a tale of two different philosophies when you look at what they did in the first half. Obviously, Coach Loddick told his kids, we're going to attack the rim, we're going to attack their bigs, which they've done a really nice job of doing, and some of their shots haven't fallen. And for the Crestview Knights, I'm not real sure they expected to be shooting this much like they have. Yeah, the math isn't <laughs> mathy, if you will. Right, we thought Crestview would go inside and dominate from two, and then that Van Wert would be shooting the rock from deep. <laughs> and Van Wert shot four threes, or one for four, and as we said, Crestview five for eight behind the arc. And a lot of that's been attributed to um, Hayden Parrott and Braxton Lee, and I know Tommy Hefner has one three as well. So it flipped the script, but you got a lot of things to be pleased with if you're both coaches and you're gonna continue to work on shorting some things up here. 
Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So here we go, partner. That was a quick first half, a real quick first half. Quick first half, and again, I think that's something we're seeing with the five fouls per quarter. No one and one, uh, not a whole lot of free throw shooting, and I think I think scores are going to go down overall as a result, but we'll see how the season plays out. And here go the Cougars again immediately attacking the rim as they get the ball down to number five, Ryland Miller. The ball goes out of bounds. It'll go back to the Cougars, and it'll be triggered in bounds by number 11, Keaton Welch. Keaton Welch, the freshman, nice first half. He, he, they, they got him quite a bit of rest, but his shots he was taking were good. He took one that was a little off, but for the most part, a nice first half. And he managed the game very well, just like a quarterback. Don't want you to lose it, just manage it. And he did a real nice job with that and then took advantage of some opportunities to score as well. So here goes the Cougars, another dribble drive there. Connor Campbell off the left side. The ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Wren, and he'll kick it back out. And the Knights will start their first possession of the second half. Knights lead 30 to 22 here, opening minutes of the third quarter. Nice turnaround there, blocked by number five, Ryland Miller. Rebound comes down to the Knights. There's a nice rebound by Sheets as he takes it back up, and he scores. Wren Sheets, the 6'6", junior, knocks it in, and he makes it 32-22 on the Charles River scoreboard. Offensive rebound, and I know Coach Etzler has to be real pleased that Wren Sheets was thinking score from the moment he got that rebound. Nice back cut by nice Schaefer. Nice back cut by Schaefer. You're exactly right, Dave, as Caden Schaefer knocks it in to cut the lead to 32-24. If you're Van Wert, what's the philosophy in the second half? Well, again, they're coming out in man-to-man. -man. We know they started with zone to begin the game, and Crestview shot the ball well. So they're going to go back to their patented man-to-man -man defense. And Coach Lodic, again, that's something he has preached, and Van Wert, the program, has preached for many, many years back to Coach Fralick and through Coach Bagley. He's going to go with what they do here in the second half and say, hey, let's see where the chips fall. Jarrett Harding on the miss for the Knights. Rebound comes down to the Cougars. They'll reset it. This is Keaton Welch. He still dribble drives to the left side. He's going to bring it up top to set it back up. Cougars down 32-24 with just under six minutes here in the third quarter. Danny Holbrook, Dave Bowen from a Big crowd here at Crestview High School, one of the meccas of high school basketball in Northwest Ohio. Sitting here in Ray Etzler Gymnasium, no place I'd rather be than hit, sitting here with you talking basketball. On brother. opening <laughs> night. And right now we're watching Van Wert probing here a little bit. They're getting in there. There's the back cut again. And a nice job. Schaefer with the back cut. Takes a lot of contact, goes through the contact, puts it up, and it's 32-26 on the Charles River scoreboard. Great offensive possession for Van Wert right there. Coach loddick has got to be very pleased. They were patient. We talked about that comfortability in the first half. It was on display right there. They get the back cut, get the bucket. This is hard, or excuse me, this is Putman out top. He'll go around to the left side. They'll go top side, then back to the right. Van Wert in a man-to-man -man defense right now. Playing off the ball, though, you know, you see when uh, Jared Hardy has the ball, they're really sinking down, playing off, daring him to shoot that ball. Daring him to shoot a little bit and making sure that Ren Sheets is not available as an offensive option. A lot of attention being played to Sheets, paid attention to to Sheets down low. Both squads being very cerebral in their attack. And there you saw Connor Sheets loses the ball, has the composure to get it, and scores the bucket to make it 34-26 on the Charles River scoreboard. I love what you said there, Danny. Cerebral, both squads picking apart the defense of the opponent through patience and execution. He thought about taking the three from the top spot. He's going to dribble drive. They'll go back out to Connor Campbell. Connor Campbell with about a 15, 16 footer. Ball goes nowhere, rebounded by the Cougars. It's slapped out of bounds and it'll go back to the Cougars. Yeah, Caden Schaefer tried to go behind his back right there. Probably fortunate that it went off a Crestview night because I don't know where that ball was going to go. Van Wert maintains possession. And they'll give Connor Sheets a break entering the game now for the Knights. Braxton Leith will come back in. I ask both coaches, what do you want to get out of this game that has nothing to do with the final score on the scoreboard? And it's just about competing, and we're seeing that from both squads. And compete, there he is. Compete, yeah. compete. There he saw number 24 for the Cougars. Colin Haggerty got great position inside on sheets, and he gets the foul. He'll go to the line for two. He will go to that Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line for the foul shot. Oh, yes. <laughs> Lisa's got to like that. 
And again, Colin Haggerty, he played in 12 varsity games last year. He was four for four from two and two for three from three last year. Makes that free throw, gets the fortunate, fortuitous bounce. And here you see the Cougars, now they've closed the gap, 34-28, just hanging around, Dave, doing a really nice job of not letting that lead. It's got up to as many as 10, uh, but give credit to Van Wert, they've stayed close. Yeah, they've cut it to six here. It was eight points at halftime. Crestview outscored Van Wert 18-12 to in that second quarter in order to build that eight-point lead at halftime. Here's Hayden Parrott with the ball. What a first half that young man had as he had three triples and two from the line. What a great job by the young sophomore. They'll swing the ball to the left side. 3.52 to go here in the third quarter. Knights lead 34-28. Taking their time, moving the ball around, little dribble drive. They'll go inside the Sheets, gets position and scores. What a nice job there by Sheets as he gets position, and you're not gonna stop him when he catches the ball down that far. Exactly, and Jared Harding with the vision to find him. Harding able to get into the middle of the paint and instead of taking the 10-footer, goes to his teammate for the two-footer. Great unselfish play. And a nice job by Crestview on the hustle. And there you see Hayden Parrott doing everything right for the Knights. Three ball from the left side up, and it's good. They're going to call it a two. They're going to call it a two for Braxton Leith. But nonetheless, another bucket. And it's a 10-point lead, 38-28 with 3.09 to go. It's been a coming out party for Parrott and Leith. Has and, it ever. Yes. And again, they both were key figures on the football team. Uh, Braxton Leith was running back, and he was injured towards the end of the year, pretty dinged up. And man, you don't see any of that tonight. He has recovered fully and shooting the ball well with confidence. You know, this JV squad for Crestview last year, which Leith and Parrott were a part of, they were 18 and 4. Yeah, there's nothing, yeah, exactly. nothing wrong with that. And the Van Wert squad with a lot of guys coming up from the JV squad, they were 12 and 10 under Damian Helm, a Crestview alum, a member of the 2014 state championship team for the Knights. And our JV game tonight was won by Crestview and Greg Rickard's squad, 53 to 39. So here come the Knights on the turnover. Three ball from the left side. And it's, oh, it's in and out. And the rebound comes down to the Cougars as they'll bring it down the floor, down 38-28 with 2.37 to go in the third quarter. Big loose, loose ball rebound right there for the Cougars. They needed to come up with that. Crestview almost pulled, came away with it, but the Cougars stayed on it. Foul line jumper there for number 11, Gage Steeman, as he knocks it in. They make it 38-30 with 2.20 to go here in the third quarter. Here comes Parrott. He'll bring the ball down, set the night offense up. They'll swing it to the left. Looking down low and looking for that back cut every time. Are they not, Dave? They run that same set, a nice set, and they're getting it open. Shot goes off the rim. Rebound comes down to the Cougars. Yeah, nice, nice offensive execution. Just didn't come up with the bucket. And there's Welch. There's Keaton Welch with the dribble drive. He scores and he's fouled with a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Old-fashioned three-point play for Keaton Welch on the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line now again. The freshman not phased by the lights tonight and didn't expect him to be again with the pedigree. Sure. And he's keeping it close at 38-33 as he knocks that in there. And the game plan has not changed for Coach Lodick. They are still going to continue attacking that rim, and he's going to stay with his principles. 38-33, 155 to go here in the third quarter. So it begs the question, does Coach Etzler think about going zone because of the penetration that the Knights are giving up? There's a nice foul line jumper, and nice job there by Connor Sheets. The 6'5 big man steps out and dares him to come out, and he knocks it down. We'll have to see how this plays out, but here goes the dribble drive again. Connor Campbell with a nice up and under, and the ball gets back to the Cougars. It was blocked by the Knights, and the Cougars come up with it. Connor Campbell on the left side of the floor calls his team to come to him, and he's going to take it inside, tries to go up and under, and a lot of defense there by Ren Sheets. Here come the Knights. They'll go down the right side. Three ball from the right side, and the ball's off the mark. And Ren Sheets goes after, throws it off the Cougar, and it's going to go back to the night. That, my friend, is high school hustle basketball. High school hustle basketball. Couldn't say it any better than that, Danny, right there. Nice job by Ren Sheets. I do think at halftime, Coach Lodick made it a point of emphasis. I want the dribble drive. I want us attacking the rim. And then I need us to make great decisions when we get down there. If you're guarded by 6'5", 6'6", jump stop, kick it out. 
But they have been successful attacking the rim here in the third quarter. You know, Dave, and, and, and really, you, you look at Crest before the first night out, their defensive effort is outstanding. Coach Esther's got to be very pleased so far with the defensive effort. Please, but again, the, the Cougar offense, they're attacking that defense. Crestview has got to continue to step up. Here's Sheets again from the foul line extended, and he knocks it in. Are you kidding me? Connor Sheets back-to-back -back foul line jumpers, and he makes it 42-33. And boy, does that put the pressure on the defense because they want to look high-low because you have Connor Sheets up high, Ren Sheets on the block. They're double-teaming Sheets Ren style down low. And Connor's making him pay with the open look. There goes Welch, foul line jumper. And he knocks it in and he's fouled. Keaton Welch with back-to-back -back old fashioned three attempts there. And a nice job by the young freshman. Such great body control. Wow. And again, I am just having visions of watching his dad play on this very floor and doing the very <laughs> same, same thing. thing. Same thing, yeah. Um, I know I've gone to that well a little bit, but it is. It's, it's worth just mentioning. coming back. Yeah, it's worth it's mentioning. It's coming back. The nightmares. <laughs> yes, exactly. Here's young Keaton Welch as he goes to the line, and he knocks it in to make it 42-36, and he's doing his darndest to keep the Cougars in this one with 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Knights lead 42-36. This is Parrott guarded by Welch up top. They'll swing it around. A little high-low there, and they're going to get a foul down on Connor Campbell, I believe, who pushed off of Ren Sheets. No, they're going to say it was, they're going to, the foul's going to go on Colin Haggerty. And the Knights were inbounded under their basket up 42-36 with 24 seconds to go. Oh. <laughs> I think we might have a little offensive Coach shot Lodick, there. Coach Lodick is really, he's at half court. He's fired up, and I, I'm not real sure how they missed that one. But uh, nonetheless, hey, it it's was opening fun. night for the That's officials. Right. You right. mentioned That's it right. earlier Absolutely. as well. Never claimed to be perfect. <laughs> Just got to be understood and accepted. That's right. It's good old-fashioned Van Wert rivalry. That's right. <laughs> Here comes Perry. He's guarded by Welch, and these two young men are outstanding players. This is a great matchup on top of this offense. Wren rings it around the right side. Parrott, he'll go back. Three ball from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ren Sheets, and he attacks the rim. Ren Sheets, are you kidding me? That's exactly how you do it, Dave. Rebound, dribble, score. Get your hands up on the glass, chin to the rim, takes the defense with him, gets the hoop in the harm, Danny. What a nice job by Ren Sheets, and he makes it 44-36 with 1.5 1, 1. seconds to go here. A chance to get an old-fashioned three-point play. And he does exactly that to make it 45-36. Cougars inbounds. Welch will throw it up from half court, and it will oh, oh. just about goes in after three quarters of play from Crestview High School. The Crestview Knights lead this one 45-36. We'll have fourth quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Crestview High School. After three quarters of play, the Crestview Knights lead the Van Wert Cougars 45-36. Our three-point sponsor tonight is Lee Kinzel on Urban Road, Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. Dave, let's take a look at third quarter by the numbers. Yeah, the Cougars were five for nine from two for 55%, one for two for, from three for 50%, four for four from the foul line. They continued to shoot it well from there. They did have three turnovers in that third quarter. Crestview. Six for seven from two-point range. That is efficient basketball, my yeah, friend. Yeah, the sheets had a lot to do with that, as did uh, Connor. One for five from three. They cooled down from behind the arc. One for one from behind the line. And that's how their stats look in. Going high-low right now. High-low back into Sheets, and they're going to get a foul call. And that foul is going to go against number two for the Cougars. That is Caden Schaefer. So again, we clean off the fouls as far as the quarter's concerned. That Van Wert picks up their first in the fourth quarter. And now they've got both sheets down low. And it's been a pretty clean game. It has game. been a very clean game. And they were going to get a foul on Keaton Welch, who's guarding Hayden Parrott. Coach Lodick said, I want to see us maximize our opportunities tonight, show great effort, shorten the margin of error, and 
who's going to be the spark? And he's looking at Haggerty and Schaefer, but we've seen Welch step up tonight. I think he's getting a, getting a lot of positive answers here as we start the fourth quarter. Parrott goes back down side to Sheets. Sheets kicks it out to Sheets. They'll go back. Parrott, top of the key, three ball on the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Caden Schaefer, and the Cougars are trying to get back in this one early in the fourth quarter. 7-18 to go here in the fourth quarter. Danny Hilbert, Dave Bowen from Crestview High School. Week one of the high school basketball season. Bringing lots of high school basketball action. There's a nice block by Parrott, and they're going to get a foul, and it looks like the foul is going to be called on Gage Steam. No, is it Steeman, I believe? No, I believe they got number 11 on the foul, Keaton Welch. So Coach Etzler has rotated guys already on Keaton Welch tonight. We've seen Tommy Hefner on him. We have seen Jarrett Harding. And right there, the sophomore, Hayden Parrott, he comes away with the block, gets the ball, and Welch fouls him a little out of a little bit of frustration. And they try to go back down low. It's going to go out of bounds. Let me ask you this, David. And, of course, I know you don't know maybe not know the answer to this. Hayden Parrott uh -oh. coming off the bench. Is this going to change his stature as far as maybe being a starter? He looks like a Dave, he's played starter minutes tonight, and he looks like a starter. Absolutely. You know, nothing is in stone coming sure. out of game one. And Crestview turns around. They play Miller City tomorrow night. Van Wert turns around, and they play St. John's tomorrow so night. So both big games for both squads. There's a three ball from the right side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Knights. They'll get it over to Sheets. Sheets looks for Parrott, and Parrott will bring the ball down for the Knights. Yeah, there's a lot of things in flux. You know, you, you talk about football, how you improve from week one to week two. I think it's the same thing with hoops. Week one, if you play two games, how you take those that weekend and translate it to the next weekend. So much can growth occurs right there at the beginning. And of the a year. nice back cut by Sheets and the block made there by Welch, but it comes back down. A lot of a lot of people and a lot of hands there, but the Cougars end up with it. And there's another takeaway for the Knights as they come down the floor attacking the rim. And a kind of a, <laughs> a little out of control shot there by number 11, Jared Hardy. And the officials are going to get together to discuss this and see who, yep, and they're going to say it's Van Wert ball. Yeah, Jared Harding split the double team, but in doing so, got himself a little bit off balance. Tried to get it up there with a little bit of English. He did. That's a great, that's a great didn't way quite to work out it. for him. <laughs> Doing and, a great uh, job of getting to the rim. But, yes. Uh, and he'll figure that out. He'll figure that Absolutely. out as the season goes on. Mm -hmm. So here comes Welch as he tries to get his Cougars back in this. Connor Campbell dribble drives to the left side. That's Let's what, kick it back out. That's what I was thinking, Danny. Big possession right here for Van Wert. Down nine, just under six to play. Need a good possession. And the ball got knocked out of bounds. And it looked like uh, Schaefer tried to grab it. But, but he knew he couldn't because he, he, he made the yes, pass. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly right. Great analysis there. We were both thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. So here comes Parrott as he'll lead his Knights down the floor. 5.35 to go. Knights up 45-36. Danny Hobart, Dave Bowen, week one of the high school basketball season. And brother will be bringing action to you all winter long. There's another jumper by Sheets. Rebound comes down, and there you see Ren Sheets. Johnny on the spot as he puts it in, and he makes it a 47-36 lead. Great offensive rebound again by Jared Harding and makes the awesome decision to get it to his teammate. Another assist for Harding, another bucket for Ren Sheets. And now the Cougars in a dangerous situation here, down 11. There's a Lee Kinzel three on the way. Goes off the mark, and the rebound comes down to Parrott. He's going to bring it down. He's going to attack the rim, goes straight up, and he knocks it in. Are you kidding me? Everything's falling for Hayden Parrott. The young sophomore knocks it in again. Coach Loddick's got to think about a timeout. He's going to take one. Yeah, Hayden Parrott goes coast to coast. Austin, L.A. to Boston and sticks it. You're watching opening night high school basketball on WOSN. Back here at Crestview High School with 4.50 remaining in this one. The Knights have extended that lead, their biggest lead of the night at 49-36. Dave, we talk a lot about what Coach Loddick wanted to see tonight. Let's talk a look at Coach Etzler. What was his expectations? What did he need to see out of his kids? Yeah, he wanted. He wants to see his team just be really, really tough at the defensive end. He wants to see them bring it defensively. And, you know, they have for the most part, but the Cougars have been tough on offense as well. And the consistency. In the scrimmages that Crestview had this year with Arlington, Pandora, Gilbo, and Paulding, he said, we just really had some highs and some lows. we got to even things out. And I think we've seen a little bit of that tonight, Danny. They have been consistent. 
the score's been around 10 points. Sure. It's up to 13 right now. And it doesn't feel like a 13 point Correct. Game. Yeah, yeah. Van Wert's been able to cut it to five. Big possession for the Cougars here. So here comes Keaton Welch and the Cougars down 13 with 444 to go. They'll try to take it down low. They'll go, Welch tries to back cut, and the ball's stolen away. And here come the Knights, up 49-36 with 4.34 to go. Parrott's on the left side. He has had a fantastic game tonight for the young sophomore leading the charge for the Knights. He's guarded out top by <clears throat> Caden Schaefer. They'll go baseline. Parrott thought about taking the three. He's just going to dribble it in, take a nice three-footer, and he knocks it in. Hayden Parrott scores again, and that young man is having a game of his life. Yeah, decision-making, A-plus, up fake and attack the rim, as you said, thought about the three, got a, gave up good for great, getting into the paint and scoring the two. 3.58 to go, Knights lead 51-36. Another three ball on top of the key, goes off the mark. Another Lee Kinzel three attempt. That ball goes off the mark, and the rebound will come down to Parrott, and you got to believe you're going to see the Knights slow things down here with 3.43 to go and up 51-36. Yeah, Van has got to pick up the defensive pressure. Crestview's got to be strong with the ball. Catch it, put it in three-point position, keep it down low, be solid with it, and go right there. And Wren Sheets with a nice curl backside, scores again to make it 53-36. Coach Loddick's not going to take a timeout here, going to keep his guys going through. He called a set out here, called out Orville. I know the name of the play. <laughs> you do a little scouting every now well, and then, don't you? <laughs> you know, like I said, we play each other for so many years that you steal from each other. Sometimes we just simply, and this is a compliment to the Cougars, we stole from them because they executed so well we couldn't defeat it. <laughs> so we had to figure out how to run it to see how teams – Kept it from happening. And there you see Connor Campbell knocking another Lee Kinzel three-point shot. Makes it 53-39 with 2.51 to go. Connor Campbell has showed you a lot tonight with his athleticism. He's done a fantastic job. And coming into the game for the Knights, number 10, Tommy Hefner, number 3, Kellen Putman. And they'll give Hayden Parrott a much-deserved rest. And Braxton Leith, those two young men, played a whale of a game. Yeah, spark plugs off the bench. Definitely changed the complexion of the game when they entered it in the first half. And we saw the same thing here in the second half as well. What a luxury early on for the Knights to have that coming off the Absolutely. bench. And, and Sheets there misses the shot twice, gets his own rebound. They're up 53-39, and that young man acts like they're down 15. That's what I'm talking about when you play with heart and hustle. Yeah, that consistent effort, that determination. Both of these coaches have seen that from their squats tonight. They're going to be able to build off of that and take that into tomorrow night's contest. So Sheets will go to the line, the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. 2.39 to go. Danny Hilbert, Dave Bowen from Crestview High School. Week one of the high school basketball season. We still got football games to play tomorrow, state championship games. So that'll all wrap up tomorrow from Ken. And then it'll be full go for high school boys and girls basketball on WOSN. Here come the Cougars down 53-39. Caden Schaefer tries to push the ball down low to number 20, Cone Bragg. The 5'11 freshman back in the game. And there you see number 44, Connor Sheets. It's a much-deserved rest. He had a heck of a game tonight. That, the the, the sheets-to-sheets high-low combination is going to be a, a nightmare for a lot of squads this year. You're right. That, and you take away the help side with that high-low action. Uh, I can remember teams that did that against us over the years when I was coaching. Uh, I think of uh, the Cook Kid and Josiah Stover from Spencerville. Sure. Oh, my gosh. And then there were some Upper Scioto squad, your <laughs> right. alma mater, yeah. Jason Williams and those guys. They take away that help side, and it's just so tough to defend down low when they go with that high-low action. Here's Connor Campbell. Three ball from the right side is off the mark. Rebound comes down. It'll go back to the Crestview Knights. And the other thing, too, when you're running that high-low, if your big man's hitting from the top, it really causes all kinds of problems. It does. Because you can't sag down. You've got to come out and contest those shots. Correct. And we've seen Connor Sheets hit that 15-footer tonight with consistency. So you have to guard him up there, or he's going to pick you apart from there. But if you go out there, then he's going to dump it down to Ren Sheets. <laughs> The sheets to sheets connection, as you said, and and Van Wert again. They're just a little undersized. They're going to have to figure out figure out how to deal with that this year. And I think maybe what they're doing right now might be a key. A little bit of full court pressure. 
and it'll be a tough WBL slate uh, with a young squad, the Van Wert. They'll figure it out. They're well coached, a lot of good athletes. They'll figure it out. Yep, Ben Loddick, his varsity assistant, Brandon Miller. They do an outstanding job. Doug Etzler, varsity assistant, Stephen Rickard. And we mentioned the JV coaches already, Damian Helm and Greg Rickard. And there's another three ball on the way from Parrott. And that's the first three ball he's missed tonight. <laughs> that is the first three ball he's missed tonight. Nice dribble drive by Welch, and that's swatted. Nice defensive play there by the Knights. They'll bring it down with 1.30 to go and the 53-39 lead. Yeah, we haven't kept that stat, but Ren Sheets, that's got to be like block number seven for him this evening. He just has timed it very well. And Caden Schaefer goes down. And Caden Schaefer goes down, and they're going to tend to him, Dave. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll have further action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School. And the young man was tended to on the floor. Who, who was it that went down, Dave? It's Caden Schaefer Kaden again. Schaefer, He's yes. a young man, you know. I'm a Chevy guy, but Caden Schaefer, he's Bill Ford tough. <laughs> and uh, he took a hit right there, got up, and uh, he's on the sideline now as both teams are Empty putting bench yeah, players absolutely. in liberally here with 118 to go. So we've got a slew of new players here. We'll try to get you all their names here as they deserve a little recognition for their outstanding schools. And our guy Hayden Parrott in there still. He's in there leading this charge, and good for him. He, he deserves all the playing time tonight because he's had an outstanding game, and uh, he has done a great job leading those Crestview Knights. So we are under one minute to go here, 53-39. Crestview Knights continue leading. And Coach Etzler is going to get some substitutes in here. Coming into the game, number four he is Owen Heckler, and number 34, Liam Putman. 6'3 sophomore. So size aboard the, the Crestview Knights. They've got some big kids through the program in the underclassmen. Yeah, and we do have two brothers out there now for Crestview in Kellen and Liam Putman. You talked about how yes. the Sheets boys are not related. <laughs> the Putman boys are. Yeah. Parrot dribble drive. He'll kick it back out. They're just going to work the outside of that man-to-man -man defense. So week one is in the books here. Great game by both these squads. We saw some ups, we saw some downs, but for the most part, a competitive basketball game with two great programs. And, and, and Dave, for a first night out, what a crowd. What a crowd, and, and, and as always, Crestview does a great job of hosting. Yeah, and, and, and the Cougars traveled very well tonight as well, and that's what you want for these kids. Owen oh, Heckler knocks that in. Owen oh, Heckler, the 6'1 sophomore, gets his name in the book. And Cougars will try to get this last shot off. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. It's good for number 20, Cohen Bragg. The Crestview Knights win this one 55-42. When we come back, we'll wrap this one up and put her to bed. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School, where we're going to wrap this one up. The Crestview Knights win this one 55-42, an impressive win by the Young Knights, and Hayden Parrott led the charge. Hayden Parrott led the charge, and if we look at the stats, the Cougars, 41% from two, 12 for 29. From three-point range, they were three for 10 for 30%. Great job from the foul line, the least famous recipe foul line, nine for 10. Crestview had... 16 for 27 from two-point range. That's 59%. The height showed itself, sure. especially in the second half. From three, they were six for 15 for 40%. Very respectable. From the foul line, four for seven. Uh, Crestview finished with 11 turnovers. Van Wert with 10. Very clean floor game for both squads. So the Van Wert Cougars will go to 0-1. They will be, I believe you said, on the road tomorrow night. At Delta St. John's. They are at yeah, St. So, John's. So opening up back-to-back -back road games, a tough schedule for the Cougars. Tough schedule, back-to-back -back road games. They play Parkway next weekend, and then turn around and play Wayne Trace. So three out of the four games, really, really tough early on. And Parkway's an up-and-coming squad as well. So Coach Lodick and Coach Miller, they've got their work cut out for them, but they can take a lot out of tonight 
break the film down tomorrow and be prepared to go to Delphus and take on St. John's. And for the Crestview Knights, and I, I've said it, I've said it at end of my, and I know maybe the folks are tired of hearing it, but those young sophomores, Dave, they grew up tonight in week one. They really did. They did. We mentioned how um, Hayden Parrott and Braxton Leith, they were spark plugs coming off the bench. And again, who knows if they'll stay in that situation, but boy, it was a real positive for Crestview. And then you look at the two bigs, Connor Sheets and Ren Sheets. They made their presence known early and often. Ren Sheets, uh, returning Northwest Conference first teamer, he did what he's supposed to do at both ends of the floor tonight. And as a result, Crestview comes away with the victory, 55-42. They host Miller City tomorrow night. So they've got to look at the film tomorrow as well. What did we do well? What can we get better at? Sometimes those young players, they think they've got it figured out. Sure. Night two is a whole <laughs> new experience. you got to figure out again, as Coach Etzler said, he wants to see consistency, get rid of the highs and the lows, be consistent, and we'll be really, really uh, formidable towards our opponents as we go down the road. So that'll wrap it up from Crestview High School. The Crestview Knights defeat the Van Wert Cougars 55-42. Special thanks to the Crestview Athletic Department. A great job, as always, by the wonderful men and women out here at Crestview High School. Big thank you to Mike Schlegbaum and Steve Richardson for supplying us with a ton of stats, Dave. They did a terrific job. For Jacob O'Neill, Dave Bowen, I'm Danny Holbrook saying we'll see you next week on WOSN.